Moshe, 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 come to me. Elohe, Abba, Enu, Elohe, Abraham, Elohe, Yitzhak, Elohe, Yaakov. Shalom. Welcome to a short edition of the Torah Watchman Show International. Your humble host here, Reb Yar bin Emmet. I have a Haftar reading for you from the minor prophet Amos, who is considered one of the latter prophets. And it's actually our Haftar reading um, for uh, Parashat Akre. And, you know, this, this last uh, uh, Parashat uh, ending uh, Shabbat, you know, Shavuot to everyone. Uh, that I hope you had a blessed uh, Shabbat. Well, you know, we were we blended in Akre with Kadoshim. And we only did that because uh, 2023, or the whole of the year 5783, is not a leap year. So we have some deviations here. Anyway, let's get started. I'm reading verse 7 through verse 15. Okay, beginning with 7, we're talking about the history of Israel. We're talking about Bible prophecy. We're talking about cause and effect. So we can benefit from, from hindsight 2020 and look back and see what the prophet Amos was talking about. Verse 7, Are you not like the children of the Cushites to me? O children of Israel, says the Lord, Adonai, did I not bring Israel up from, from the land of Egypt? We're talking about slavery there. And the Philistines from Kaphar and Aram from Kerr. Remember the Philistines actually became extinct shortly either before or just after the Roman Empire uh, dominated the scene of the Middle East. Um, verse 8, Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy, destroy it from upon the face of the earth, but I will not destroy the house of Yaakov, at least not completely, says the Lord. Verse 9, For behold, I command, I will scatter the house of Israel among the nations as it shaken in a sieve, and not a coarse particle falls to the earth. What are we talking about? We're talking about the great uh, expulsion of the Jewish people, the 12 tribes of Israel, that happened shortly um, uh, during, the, during the reign of the son of King Solomon. He was not wise as his father. He vexed the northern territories uh, to the point that they declared independence. And long story short, through a series of evil kings, since they were cut off from temple worship, um, they were assimilated by the Assyrian Empire into foreign lands. I mean, uh, Australia, Asia, Japan, uh, Russia, you could just use your imagination, okay? These are nine and a half tribes that were lost. And that's, it's just like God is literally shaking the ground of the Jewish people, of the sinful Jewish people. Many people died of the sword. I mean, the Babylonians killed all the resistance fighters in a time of of the destruction of Jerusalem and the burning of the King Solomon Temple. This is in the days the prophet Jeremiah, who the weeping prophet, had tried to warn the Jewish people, you need to humble yourselves, have fear and trembling knees before the Lord your God, and ask for forgiveness. But the evil king there of Judea refused. <clears throat> so in verse 10, the sword shall, shall all the sin, sinful of my people perish. So by the sword, this is about combat, this is about warfare. 
This is about invading armies? Just use your imagination. Think about the Roman Empire. Think about the Greek Empire and Persians. All the nations that, um, that vexed the Jewish people, uh, they, chose, they chose to attack the Jewish people. They chose to kill the Jewish people. God um, allows these chess, pay, chess pieces to be played out on, in the divine chessboard, per se, of life. And uh, however, there's cause and effect. In verse 10, uh, people even said, the evil will not come upon us. The, you know, this is exactly what, what the foolish uh, Judean said uh, to the prophet of Jeremiah. It would never happen. And the king said, God would never destroy his temple. They don't understand. They drove Hashem, his Shekinah glory, away from the temple before it was destroyed. It went to the river Kabar. You, you can read the book of Ezekiel about that story, okay? So, however, in verse 11, on that day that's beyond the time of judgment and desolation, I will raise up the fallen tabernacle of Dolvid. This is the temple, folks. And I will and I will close up the breaches, uh, any walls that were damaged from warfare. This was done partially in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. It was also uh, repaired. The walls were repaired uh, partially in Judah Maccabee time, but it was never truly repaired to the point where they could defend, the Jewish people could defend themselves from the invading army. I mean, uh, considered 70 CE when the temple was destroyed, and there were Zionists at that time, uh, pursuing a false messiah. Essentially, God did not honor that. And all those Jews either died or they were expelled from, from the land of Judea. Now we talk about the land of Edom. Folks, this is none other than Jordan proper. Just go east of the uh, Jordan River and you'll see uh, that landmass there. This is the other half of the Balfour Agreement that the um, uh, Great Britain lied to the Jewish people and um, kind of a under table evil deal with the Arabs there, the Hashemites per se, believe it or not, um, they gave that land over to Jordan and they became a country in 1946 or whatever. So Edom is of course the land of the domain of the empire of Esau and his descendants. So all this land, all this land um, will be returned to Israel proper in the golden days of King Solomon. So verse 13, Behold, days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman will meet the reaper and the treader of the grapes, the one who carries the seed, and the mountain shall drip sweet wine, like, and all the hills will melt with, like milk and honey. These are the promises that God gave you. Um, um, Joshua and Moshe and the children of Israel when they crossed into the, the promised land. You know, remember these stories about, about that. Verse 14, and this is Hashem speaking again. I will return to ca um, the captivity of, of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild desolate cities and inhabit them. Uh, and they shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and, and eat their produce. This is partially have already been fulfilled in this prophecy, okay? The return of exiled Jews to the land. Um, there are Jews, uh, there's thousands literally of Jews returning to the Holy Land every week. So these prophecies are already have transpired and come true. So, you know, you of course, in the day of Amos, a lot of people thought it was impossible that Israel would ever be a nation again. Of course, we just celebrated 75, 75 years since Israel was reborn from the Phoenix ashes. Verse 15, and closing this out, and I will plant them on their land. Now, whose land is this? Is it Palestinians? Is it Arabs? No, this land belongs to Yehudim. It belongs to the Jewish people, Am Yisrael Chai, and they shall no longer be uprooted from upon their land that I have given them, said the Lord your God. I mean, what other uh, message of truth do you need to hear? Uh, this is wonderfully sweet. I just wanted to share it with you. I heard it in synagogue today. I couldn't wait to do this short little videotape. Anyway, God bless you. Uh, Shalom Aleichem to you. Please share the knowledge of wealth and love and truth for everyone you that was willing to hear it. If they aren't willing, why don't you live that truth and you'll see them come running to you and grab the hem of your dark, um, uh, garment and they say, take me uh, to learn uh, the Torah in your synagogue. Take me to Jerusalem. I want to know more about the God of Israel. Yes, that is wonderful and sweet. 
Yes, thank you. Please subscribe, person and notify, because you never know when I'll have another exciting video coming your way. Again, God bless you.